Welcome to the sixth lecture in module five. And in this lecture, we'll consider how Rails controllers handle the request side of the HTTP protocol. And in the next lecture, we'll look at how it handles the response side of the protocol. Now, we've already talked about how um, models, in other words, the M in model view controller, are supported by the Ruby active record module. Um, active record module is embedded into Rails. Now views and controllers in Rails are supported by something called Action Pack. And that consists of, of three modules, Action Dispatch, Action Controller, and Action View. We'll look at the first two in this module, and then we'll look at Action View in the next module. Now controllers, they're really the heart of a Rails application. When a user connects to your application, they do it by asking your application to execute a specific um, method that's contained within a controller. How does Rails determine which controller action it should execute? So we've already looked at how HTTP makes a request and how a response is provided. What happens in between? When you make that request, how does your web application know what code to execute? That's what we'll discuss now. So when an HTTP request is made to a Rails application, the action dispatch module kicks in. And what it does is it maps a request to a particular controller action. Now, requests are mapped to controller actions. We've already seen this through routes. And the routes are defined by going to config from the root of your Rails application, go to config, and then routes.rb. Open that up, and you'll see the routes that are defined for your Rails application. Type rake routes again, as I said, and you'll see a listing of all of these uh, the routes that are currently defined for your application. Now, to connect a particular request to a particular controller action, you've got to go to that file and change it. Now, you'll see that when we ran the uh, scaffold generators, it created a few routes for you automatically. If you want to change them, you've got to know how to edit that file. And the examples of the way you can do it are actually provided as comments within that file. Here's an example. Let's try to create a route that takes a GET request that's issued for products with a particular ID. And what this is saying is I want to map that to the catalog controller in an action called view. So there would be a catalog controller, controller with a method called view is what, is what this is saying. Map that request to the catalog view action. So here's what would happen is if you see an HTTP request that from the root of an application and then we see here products and then the ID in this case is 10, here's how it would get mapped. The view method in the catalog controller class and you see what Rails assumes here. If you use the term catalog, it assumes it looks for something called catalog controller and then it looks for a method within that controller called view. And then it assigns a value 10 to a hash called params. And so if you say params ID, it's going to return the value 10. And so that's used by your controller to process this request. Now, if you look inside your routes.rb file, you don't see anything like this get. You see resources posts and resources comments. It doesn't look like what I just showed you. So what's going on here? Well, let's take a look. By default, Rails controllers are all RESTful. In other words, they use what's known as resource routing. And that's why you see resources post, resources comments there. To understand what REST is, um, and by the way, first of all, that stands for representational state transfer. Uh, representational state transfer. And the fundamental philosophy behind REST is that clients should communicate with servers through stateless connections where the long-term state on the server side is kept by maintaining resources. And this is what you're going to do as a part of active records. You maintain resources. And you just think of posts and comments as resources. And then you can access these resources through just a few simple commands or CRUD operations. Remember, CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Destroy. So what REST does is it provides a highly limited but useful set of interfaces that are CRUD operations, and they connects them up to, to URLs, as you've already seen. So we can add, delete, update, or destroy 
um, posts and comments automatically within our Rails application. And so computation in a RESTful architecture proceeds by identifying the resource and the CRUD operation that you like to perform and then executing it. So it really simplifies things, this, this representational state transfer approach. Now, a REST-based web application can be uh, contrasted to an RPC-based web application where RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call. Now, in an RPC-based application, clients send requests to the server asking that server to execute a specific procedure, supplying it with specific parameters. And what typically happens in this case is that the services that the particular server can respond to are advertised. And so you need to know the specific um, procedure used to call that server to get particular data. Quite a bit different from a RESTful approach. With a RESTful approach, you would just assume that there are resources. And if you know that those resources are on a particular server, you query them through that very limited interface that we've already discussed. SOAP is a protocol that was developed by Microsoft that supports this RPC-based approach. Again, this is contrasted to REST where you've got just a very simple set of verbs. And in our case, these end up being controller actions or, or methods. And sometimes you see action or method used in this Rails world that op operate over a very rich set of resources. So the richness is on the resources or noun side of it, but you restrict the verbs. If you think about it, an RPC approach is kind of the opposite. There's a, a rich set of verbs that you apply in this case. So REST constrains things. And these constraints can lead to web applications that are much easier to write and maintain. Um, rather than implementing remotely accessible services, you think about just performing CRUD operations on the resources that are provided by your web application. And this has enabled something called the programmable web, which is really treats the World Wide Web as this big set of resources out there that you can operate over. And the RESTful approach has led to a programmable web that's much easier to work with, much easier to create things like mashups or web applications that include uh, um, other services within it. So it's very common nowadays to see, for example, a map that's pulled from Google as a part of a web application. That's ex an example of a mashup. And there are many web services that provide uh, or I should say web companies that provide services in, in, using a RESTful approach. Twitter, Flickr, all of them provide a, a, a RESTful API or application programmer's interface that allows you to pull that information into your own web application if you'd like. Now let's look at the statement in routes.rb. It says resources posts. Again, this is, doesn't look like what I showed you previously. What this does is it produces the seven RESTful routes that you need to have a RESTful application. And these are them. So on the first side, you see the HTTP verb. It's either get, post, or these others that we've already gone over. The path, and what this path refers to is the URL, the URL that you would use. So HTTP localhost colon 3000 forward slash post is going to go to the index method in your post controller and the purpose is to display all the posts. And then you'll see the others that are provided here as well. And again, you can see all of these by typing rake routes and you'll actually see these. So this completes the sixth lecture in module five.